Masha Allah, both are 25 or the ladies are 20 and the husband is 25. Subhanallah, everything is there. The wife is beautiful, the husband is handsome, mutual attraction. This is the love. Honey is there. Honey, what happened to you? Everything is honey. You know, this is honeymoon. That's the beginning of the marriage. But you can imagine after 50 years, what happens? Where that physical attraction anymore? Everybody's walking with stick on the street. But you know what? In Islam, love must remain. And that kind of love is more than just physical attraction. That is called mercy. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is called rahmatan lil alameen. His mercy to all humanity. Why? Because his love, his compassion, his kindness to the people is not because of any reason. Rasulullah loved us. Not because we gave him money. Rasulullah loved us. Not because we say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. He doesn't need anything from us. Simply because Rasulullah have that nature to love every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can imagine how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so sad when someone burned the house of ants. How you call that? There's an ant, right? There's a house. And there's a fire. So he said, who burned this? For no reason. People are just playing with that. And there's nobody answering. And he said, the one who did this must be responsible in the day of judgment. That these ants being killed, being burned, without any reason. They didn't bother you? What's the reason to, to burn them? You can imagine how Rasulullah was so upset to the woman who let the cat die starvingly. And because of that, Rasulullah <laughs> warned her to be in hell fire. And how Rasulullah out of his compassion was so happy that the bad woman also gave the water to that dog. Happened to be a very thirsty dog. That is the mercy of Rasulullah That is the love of Rasulullah. That his love is not limited. And that is the meaning of mercy, my brothers, coming back. Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman. Rasulullah once, he was walking with his Sahaba. It was in the desert. There's a woman breastfeeding her kid. And Rasulullah understood, as I mentioned in my khutbah last time here, that the most intimate connection between the mother and the son, or the, or the kid, when the mother is breastfeeding. The kid, he said to his people, do you think this mother is willing to throw his kid to the fire? And everybody say, no, Ya Rasulullah. Do you think this mother loves her kid? They say, Ya Rasulullah, of course. <coughs> and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more loving and merciful to his servant than this mother to her kid. <laughs> Someone who is committing mistakes, the mercy of Allah, we are still talking about Ar-Rahman. Committing mistakes for the whole life. One day Rasulullah sallallahu gave another illustration. He said if someone's in the middle of the desert, the desert, with all his provision on the camels, and suddenly he fall into sleep, and his camel was there to his side before he's sleeping, and suddenly when he woke up, he didn't find his camel with all his provisions. And he was in the middle of the desert, nowhere to go. No water, no food, he didn't know where to go looking around, nothing but desert. He was so sad and just there waiting for a death to come. And suddenly he was again coming back to sleep, just waiting for a death. And when he opened his eyes, suddenly his camel came back. Rasulullah asked the companions, the Sahaba, how do you think he felt? Everybody said, Ya Rasulullah, he's the happiest moment in his life. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even happier. When someone committed sin and that person came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is even happier than that person when his camel and provision came back. In that kind of situation. So you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Ar-Rahman, my brothers and sisters, has a lot of meanings that we can talk. We can talk hours and hours when we talk about this. My point is that this is one of the points that we have to have in life. 
that Allah is so merciful. And if each one of us has this concept, Allah is merciful, inshallah our life is easier. We are poor, you have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are sick, you have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have difficulties in life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more merciful. You have challenges in life, Allah is even merciful. Nobody love you, Allah is loving you. Nobody like you, it doesn't matter, Allah likes you. The mercy of Allah is closer than the mercy of anybody else. If we just have this understanding, our life has been easier than what we are sometimes in these days. Economic difficulties then, many people are facing these days, including Muslims. If we just have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the concept of Ar-Rahman, it will be easier for us to face those difficulties. So my brothers and sisters, this is one of the essentialities that we have in life. We have to have in life. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it starts from believing that He is our Creator. He is the Malik of Razak. He is the Malik of everything. The ayah that we read in the, in the Salat, in Surah Al-Maghrib, in, in, in Maghrib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test us. And when Allah says, If you understand the grammar, there is la, it's called la mutawkid. It's in Arabic grammar. And then na, nuannakum, this nunu tawkid. So there are two tawkid here. La mutawkid and nunu tawkid. It means to underline, to stress, kind of stressing point. Surely, certainly, there is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you. So don't doubt, do not be doubtful. Because in every inch of our life is a test. This life is a whole, it's a test. Nothing but a test. Don't think that those who are easy in life is not a test. Sometimes when you have easier in life, we forget to come and say, Astaghfirullah. Sometimes. It's a test. Sometimes we are, when we are healthy, we forget to say, Ya Allah. And the moment Allah tests us, the otherwise when we are sick, that is the time we say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. This is the time to remember to say, Allah, please help us. It's a test. Every single aspect of human life is a test for us. But the next ayah is very important. The word inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un is very important. It's a part of mercy. When we believe in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just have that, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un, we are going to face the challenges of life easily. Allah is the Khalik, the Creator, the Malik, the Honor, and He is the Manager, al mudabbir I'm using the word Manager. Means nothing happens in this life without the management of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the rules and the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no single leaf fall in the jungles from the tree without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no small fish in, in the deep of the ocean can find any food to eat without the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tsunami didn't happen if Allah doesn't want it to happen. Of course the causes came from the human beings because of the irresponsible action of human beings. But because Allah wanted it to happen, it happened. And that's the meaning of Muslims believing in the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, again coming back, Ar-Rahman. It's not just reading it. We have to be understand it very deeply. And it must affect our life easily. The second one that we have to understand is Allam al-Quran. The essentiality of life is the Holy Quran. What is the Holy Quran? It's guidance. Because without the Holy Quran, we are confused. <coughs> without the Holy Quran, we are in darkness. Even Rasulullah was reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Duha. He said, Allah had found you in a stray. You are dalal, fi dalal, in a stray. You are away. Because you live in the midst of the mushrikeen. And if it is not because of the guidance of Allah, probably you could, have, you, you could have fallen into the same trap. Became a mushrik, but Allah saved you. 
And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu acknowledged and understood that. Later on, when he became a prophet and became the most obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he woke up at night, his wife asked him, Say, Ya Rasulullah, why you have to do this? Fasting, Khamis, Ithmain, Thursday, morning, sometimes every other day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi did fast. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi woke up most of the night time to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi most of the time he used to say, Astaghfirullah. So his wife was so amazed or surprised. Aisha said to him, Ya Rasulullah, why you have to do all this? Number one, you are the Prophet of Allah. Number two, that being as the Prophet, you are protected by Allah. It means you are not commit any sin. There is ma'asum called ma'asum al-isma. Number three, Ya Rasulullah, you are guaranteed to enter paradise. Because if Rasulullah doesn't enter into the heaven, the jannah, who else will enter into jannah? He is the first person to enter into jannah. He is Sayyidul Mursaleen. He is the master of all the prophets of Allah. So if Prophet Muhammad is not entering, who else will enter? And so I should say, Ya Rasulullah, why you have to do all this? And the answer is going back to that because Allah guided him. He said, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Shouldn't I be a thankful person? I wanted to say, oh Allah, thank you so much for the guidance. I can pray to you. I can do fast. I can do dhikr. I do istighfar. Even I became a prophet, not because I appointed myself. It's because of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he was able to worship Allah, the reason behind it, number one, is because he wanted to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why many people say, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And we didn't create men and jinn except to worship. The meaning of worship here, among the meaning of worship, is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our life is everything about thankfulness. From morning to night, night to morning, Muslims must know how to say thank you Allah. Alhamdulillah. And that's why the very beginning of the Holy Quran, after Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, is Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. The Quran is a guidance. Why it is very essential? Because again, if we don't have the Holy Quran, we could have been misguided, all of us, without any exception. There is no doubt that in the very beginning, we have that guidance, natural. Natural guidance called fitra. And essentially, everybody basically knows what is right, what is wrong. But because of the circumstance where we live in, our fitra is being covered. And that's why sometimes we are becoming confused to see which one is light and which one is darkness. You go out to the street and you don't know which one is right, which one is, 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 is false. Yet you have basically a permanent life called fitra in your heart. But why still we are misguided? Because we don't know. So that's why the Holy Quran is very essential. So when the Holy Quran came down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first one was Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Why Iqra? Because the first one is to uncover the ignorance of people. Why Iqra? Because essentially we have the light, but that light is being ignored. <coughs> we are ignorant. So the Holy Quran came down basically to uncover that ignorance so that our nur, the nur which is in our hearts, connect with the revealed nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nur from the heavens and that is the Holy Quran. And nur that we have, when this nur connected, are connected, become united, that is the real guidance. This Quran is guidance by itself. And our heart has guidance in it. That's called fitra. Because that fitra never being missed. And hatta Fir'aun, even Fir'aun. Fir'aun never lost his fitra. When he died, when he was in the middle of the sea, under the ocean, 